So, like Brandon said, my name is Alex. I'm the high school youth uh, director here at the Rock of Roseville. That's my wife, some of the high school and middle school students. And um, I've been here for about four years, and it's been an honor to be a part of this body, to be a part of this family. And I'm just going to jump into it. I was saved November 24th, 2014. I was a drug addict. I was addicted to sex. I was addicted to the culture. I was addicted to everything that served me and honored me and what I wanted and what I wanted to do. That's what I wanted. But like we all know, there's an exchange. I want to gratify, I, I want to gratify my soul. And in exchange, I get emptiness. And I get a hole. But then Jesus came November 24th, 2014, and he set me free from all of that. And he set me free from my addictions, and he set me free, and now I'm saved, I'm sanctified, I'm in him. <laughs> However, there's three things that I've learned. I've been walking with the Lord for six years now. There's three things that I've learned that will keep you. Obedience, suffering, and sacrifice. If you don't have those three in your heart, you're going to fail. You're going to be deceived by a false gospel that has entered into this church that says it's about your process, it's about your feelings, and it's about how people can serve you. That is not the word of God. Every day I read the Bible, every day I'm trying to connect with him because I know that I'm the problem. I know if I fall into a false gospel, like Galatians 1 says, I'm out. And I just got deceived by the devil, and I don't even know it. And in 2020, I watched so many friends that are close to me. The devil came into my backyard, and I watched him pick people apart. And the worst part about it, I can handle friends that are like, you know, I don't want anything to do with Jesus anymore. I can handle that. That's easy. He's being real. The worst part about it is people saying, no, God says that I can do this. And God says that it's right. And, and there's an exchange. They're giving up their feelings. They're giving up their life. They're giving up their destiny. And ex in exchange, they're taking on this false gospel with no power whatsoever. And this is not new. This happened in the first century church right here. Galatians 1. Paul's writing to the Galatians and he says, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. So you can't distort the gospel. It's either for or against. There's no, there's no gray area. God isn't gray. Sorry for those of you that watch that YouTube channel. God isn't gray. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. In 2020, like I said, I watched so many of my friends get deceived and taken out. And they think that they're in the will of God. In these six years, I've had, I've had a handful of mentors in my life. And I, that, that discipled me. That encouraged me, that spent time and money on me and my development and my growth in Christ. And the sad part about it, I've watched every single one of them fall. Every single one. I watched their thought life as I meditated on it. I watched what they allowed in, just little thoughts. They all started with little thoughts. And they all fell to these three things. Drugs, sexual morality, and moral failure. Every single one of them. Some of them have gotten up by the grace of God, but you can see the scar in their life. You can see how they're not as effective in the gospel anymore. Others are still down, and they think that God is applauding them. But they're leading many to destruction. And so my heart cry to you, church, is to know how important your position is in Christ. You're being watched by the world, by your family, by your friends. If no one's standing for the gospel, you better be. You better me. I'm so glad that 
My faith does not stand on man's wisdom alone, but it stands on the power of God. And that's how I came in. And that's how I'm going to finish. So I will continue to stand. I will continue to stand. 2020 was a desert. And me and my wife, we went through hell. We went through hell. And we, we could have quit. We could have walked away from Jesus. We could have done everything that I watched so many of my friends do. And, and the worst part about it, most of the body of Christ would have justified my actions if I walked away. I'm not here to justify your actions. I'm here to call you up, church. I'm here to call you up, church. Like I said, I'm trying to communicate the best I can. And... Those of you that are still suffering, those of you that are still in this place of sacrifice and hurt and pain, and you are moving forward from the scars, or you're trying to figure out what is this, what is this pain worth? What is all this worth? Why am I doing this? It's so easy. The devil's right here, and the temptation makes sense, and it's so easy. What is it worth? I need you guys to look into my eyes. It's worth this fire. It's worth this passion. And I promise you, if you hold on, if you hold on to Jesus, if you hold on to God and you endure in the gospel and you keep saying yes, keep saying yes, keep saying yes, the fire is going to grow within you. God is not going to forsake you. I have a hope that's greater. I have a hope that's greater than I can grab, than I can just muster all my strength up. I can't grab it on my own. There is a hope that's so far above me. And that's what keeps me going is because I need Jesus. I need his hope. I need his life. I need his way. The three biggest deceptions of the soul. I want, I feel, and I think. The things that help transform your soul. He wants, he thinks, and what he feels. You are not made for you. I'm sorry. You were made for him and you were bought at a price. You were bought at a price. You, you are not your own. This world needs you. This world needs you. It needs the hope that you have. As believers, you're called to carry something greater. You're called to have a bigger answer. I'm not putting my hope in 2021. I'm not. It's in Christ. It's in God. I'll go homeless and serve Christ. I'll go hungry and serve Christ. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter where I end up. As long as he's in my heart. As long as I can dwell in his house. That's it. That's all I want. That's all I want. And everything will be added. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Do you want to know how my 2021 started off? This is how it started. This is why I have no hope in it. This is why I have no hope in it. First call. I got a call from my buddy who, uh, uh, he was a good friend in high school played football with him. He stayed at my house for about three months. We housed him for a little bit and he just hit me up. He's my age. And, uh, he texts me from prison. You're not supposed to have a phone, but Hey, he did. You don't want to know how he got it. And he texts me from prison and I said, well, Hey, what's up? What are you doing in prison? How's your vacation? And he says, uh, I'm here for life. And I said, who did you kill? How many? And he said, I only got charged for one. Can you please write me and send pictures? He's my age. He's about to do more time than he has lived. The second message I got was from my stepdad who raised me since I was two years old. And he said, hey, just letting you know, I'm homeless. I'm sleeping at Rush Park. I'm thinking of uh, a couple of your friends that are homeless. 
I don't know how I got here. That's my father. It's the man who raised me. And then there was a third phone call that I got. A third one. And this one fueled me. This one fueled me. And I'm still running off of that high. My buddy called me. And he said, hey, there is a woman who just got out from an ultrasound. She has a 19-week-year-old baby. And the baby doesn't have a heartbeat. Do you want to pray with her? Of course. Let's do it. Let's go after this. Let's go after this thing, man. So she shows up. I don't know her. I'm with me, my wife, my buddy Shane. And she says she has one more ultrasound, and it's a confirmation. And it's tonight. And the moment we sat down, we, we, we felt the presence of God right away, right away, right away. And this mama was like, I'm not even going to think about my baby dying. I'm going, to, I'm going to press in. And so I said, okay, let's pray. And we prayed, and we prayed, and we prayed, and the power of God came. We all felt it. Every single person, we felt it. And I'm watching this mom with a dead child in her, who she's named, weep. Pray in the spirit and plead for God to give her this child. That night, that night, she goes to the confirmation ultrasound. And the doctor still said, the baby's dead. And you think, I'm going to bow to my feelings. This is why you're in the world. To let these failures, we missed it. I wish this mom has her baby. I wish that, she, that this baby would come out. I wish, but I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop praying. Two days later, the Lord gave me a dream. And in the dream, there's a dead old man. And I step over him and I walk to his soul. And his soul is, 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 is laying in some restaurant on some tables. And I look at him and I say, wake up in Jesus name, wake up. And I'm going and I'm going. And then poof, he wakes up. And then I woke up from my dream because it was so real. And the Lord said, don't stop. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. So I'm saying to you, church, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. It hurts. I know. But suffer with him. Deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow him. Come on, we got this. We got this. We got this. Just keep going. Just keep going. And I promise you the fire and the passion will follow. It will be cultivated in you. Can I have everybody stand up? Everybody just close your eyes, lift your hands, put them out in front of you. Your life is made for so much more. Do the hard thing. Do the hard thing. Do the hard thing. Your life is on display for the whole world to see and for your family and for your friends. And the world needs you. The world needs you to know him. Because knowing him is, is eternal life. And he is good. And he's going to deliver you. And he's going to set you free. And he's going to use you to deliver others. There's nothing greater than you being used by the Holy Spirit to help somebody else's life. So those of you that have been stung by 2020 and you've been trapped in apathy... Your heart has been hardened and you're thinking, where is God? Where is he? Where is he? This is your moment to cry out to the Holy Spirit because he's with you. Remember your life is so much greater than you know. 
so much greater than you know. You are his. And I'm going to pray Ephesians 3, 16 through 20 over you. And I just ask that you receive this word in your heart. This is Paul praying to the Ephesians. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God, to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. Christ be the glory. So Holy Spirit, I thank you. I thank you right now for every heart in this room. Father, fill them up in the name of Jesus. I just command your presence over every hungry heart, every heart that is longing for you, God. I command your presence over them. Fill them up right now. Renew their spirit right now in the name of Jesus. We break the lie off the enemy. Father, I thank you for the purpose and the destiny of every single believer in this room, every single person in this room. You have a call of God on your life. Don't settle. Don't give in to temptation. Don't give in to the lie. Keep moving. Keep enduring. In the name of Jesus.